Hello everybody. Today's subject is kitchens and bathrooms. I'm standing in front of the chair's kitchen. So that's not a typical kitchen, but it has certain elements that are typical for kitchens. Like for example, these corpuses here. You can see that in the middle, they're just separated, but uh, they have a sidewall. And uh, the next one has a sidewall as well. And this comes as a prefabricated element. These corpuses are put on a base, which is about uh, 10 centimeters high, and uh, they have a work plate on top of it. The work plate is about 90 centimeters high, a little more, a little less, so it's an average that you have to satisfy. And uh, then behind that, you have ceramic tiles as to protect the wall against uh, spillage of water and uh, then you have certain equipments. And then the distance between the work plate and the shelves here is uh, 57, so that could be a little less as well if you're working with um, cupboards uh, in the upper part. So the work plate is about 60 centimeters deep and here the upper part in this case is 36 centimeters but normal cupboards are 40, 45, in any case less than the work plate itself. So in this case we have indirect lighting which is hidden behind these shelves. There might be little spots integrated in this element as well, or other types of kitchen typical lighting. There are certain pieces of equipment, like for example the dishwasher, which is fully integrated in this case. So it's rather hidden, you wouldn't say there is one. Uh, then we have the fridge, and we have uh, the cooking plates here, rather small because it's a professional uh, environment. And the sink itself, hot water, cold water, and uh, the installations that are necessary to provide uh, hot water underneath. There are certain parts that you have to hide. So one is the boiler for making hot water. Then you have uh, the tap here and uh, the wastewater. You can see here, this is the wastewater, which uh, has to be linked to the uh, central um, shaft, which is someplace behind this wall. So there are different zones in a kitchen. One is uh, dishwashing. So this goes together with the dishwasher. This is uh, the cooking area, rather small in this case, because as I said before, this is an office. And then you have storage for, for example, dishes and uh, other goods that you need in a kitchen. You need uh, storage for food as well. As you can see, all these surfaces are rather uh, slick and easy to clean. Mm -hmm. And everything has to be well protected because it is cleaned quite often. You can see that the ground here uh, is a little more used in front of the work plate than the rest of the room. It's a linoleum in this case, uh, which uh, is rather rough uh, so that you don't slide. And it's easy to clean nevertheless uh, together with the rest of the space. So there are small kitchens for small apartments with only three elements. One element is about 60 by 60, but that's very small and for a normal apartment you will need five up to six as a minimum. And what's quite popular is the laboratory kitchen, which has work plates on either side and about one meter twenty from one side to the other. This has been discussed uh, controversially. The theory is that it might be more interesting to have a dining table in the kitchen as to make it a living space and not a laboratory. So if you have a larger space, then you could have a sort of island for the preparation of plates in front of a laboratory arrangement and maybe eating 
connected to this, so there are different uh, possibilities of arranging the work part and the dining part. So as I told you before, in section I have the work plate, then I have the corpuses, which are normally prefabricated. They sit on a, a base and in the upper part I might have uh, shelves. Um, they should be at a distance of more than 45 centimeters as to be able to reach them even if you're a smaller person and to have enough distance here not to be uh, hindered by uh, the upper part. And the work surface should be at around 90 to 95 uh, centimeters. That's about it. So now we're entering in the men's room. The yeah. female equivalent is uh, almost confronted to the same problems as the men's room. Okay, here I'm next to the basins. The basins are suspended and you can see that the wall behind the basins is hollow. We will film inside this hole afterwards. And what you also see is that the ground is covered with a different type of ceramic tiles than the wall. It's because the ground is cleaned every day and the walls are clean from time to time. So normally the joints here are much darker than the joints on the wall. And this is why you tend uh, to use a different type of tiling on the floor so that you don't get the impression that it has been insufficiently cleaned. And uh, these floor tiles also have to be uh, Easy to clean, but nevertheless uh, sufficiently rough not to slide and to fall in these rather wet environments. So you can see that the basins are suspended from a type of under construction with metal profiles. These metal profiles are covered with a special type of gypsum board, which is water resistant, and then the Ceramic tiles are glued on top of that. So that's the water supply here. In this case, only for cold water because German government wants to save uh, energy. And there's the sink, the evacuation, which is then linked to a central shaft where all the wastewater is taken to the canalization. This is the urinal part. Behind that, once again, the hollow wall. And on the other side, um, the uh, water closets um, with the uh, integrated uh, water reservoir in the wall. You can see that ventilation is a particular problem in uh, these spaces where the air is rather humid and the, the environment might be smelly. And so there's uh, ventilation integrated in the suspended ceiling here. Another toilet. Uh, you can see that the sinks are, as in the first case, 90 centimeters high. Once again, there's a hollow um, gypsum board construction behind that. And uh, once again, uh, ceramic tiles here. The mirror is uh, flush with the surface of the ceramic tiles, which looks rather nice. So bathrooms are normally uh, rather small size and um, the minimum for a toilet would be around uh, 90 centimeters wide. If the door opens to the outside, uh, about one meter 50 um, long. A shower is often put uh, in the angle. You might have shower doors um, opening and the shower installation uh, to one of the walls. And behind the toilet there might be a little reservoir or this might be interest integrated in the wall behind. So if it's integrated in the wall behind you need a certain space here which uh, starts at around 20 uh, centimeters. 
And then what you need is a water supply here and uh, evacuation to a central shaft, which could be here. So today you have a lot of different formats for showers. They start at around um, 90 by 90. Maybe you have a fixed glazing here on one side uh, so that you can walk in from here, have your shower and uh, that there's a slope in the uh, screed on the floor so that water gets evacuated to a central point. Well, in this case, you could have a bathtub as well. So bathtubs normally start at uh, 1 meter 50. 1 meter 90 is nice for a normal sized person like me um, to um, have a bath in. And um, well, here it's written 1 meter 80, but if you want a little reserve, then you take a meter 90. Um, so then you have to make your bathroom a little wider. And behind all of this, once again, installation space. Maybe you don't need it behind the shower and the bath, so it could be in a certain area only. And maybe the vertical shaft can also be only in a certain area so that you can have a mirror behind uh, the sink. So the outlets in the wall are not easy to uh, coordinate. And there are different theories. One would be to put um, the supply, the water supply, at uh, the crossing of uh, ceramic tiles. And another would be to put them in the middle of the ceramic tile, because here you only um, have to cut one ceramic tile and not four at a time. So if there are any changements, this might be easier to repair. But in any way, you should have coordination between the ceramic tiles and the installations behind. And that's not so easy, because you don't see the ceramic tiles when you are installing uh, the bathroom. Low stake, it's me.